Hello YouTube. In this video I'm going to start checkering my uh, 92FS converted to Vertec. And I've already used the 1911 jig um, that I used for all my checkering uh, videos to do vertical lines. Just a few. I just marked them down. As you can see my 1911 vertical line uh, checkering jig is attached to the frame. It attaches the exact same way uh, to this frame as it does to a 1911 frame. And uh, I started using a copper wire as a stop for the file. Uh, and I actually had to prop it up with a little clamp. Uh, later I decided to use some zip ties, but um, this was how I laid down a few starting vertical lines. And then I tried to work out some sort of a way to guide my file for the uh, horizontals. Well, the parallel bars are butted up against the grip screw bushings on the frame and uh, on top I'm uh, holding them with the tool maker's clamp. This was just a quick uh, solution because I didn't want to make a jig. Um, it worked out just fine. Uh, all I needed to do was lay down a couple of guidelines um, or starting lines and then continue uh, checkering as normal. I already have a few lines here marked down. So at this point, all I need to do is deepen them a little bit to use them as guidelines for uh, the checkering file so I can start moving them or moving the checkering file over. Uh, this process is exactly the same as every other checkering video I've done, where first I deepen the, file, the, the guidelines, the initial lines, and then moving the file over a couple of lines at a time, I start creating new lines. Uh, the old lines or the beginning lines are serving as a guide for the checkering file. I've showed the checkering files before, uh, all their teeth uh, rows are in rows, um, so those lines serve as perfect guides. And you'll start seeing here in a second, there, there you go, that's the first time I moved the file over, two lines. Uh, this is the second time. And I just go two, three lines at a time. Uh, moving the file down and then I'll go the other way and uh, start moving the file up uh, to create new lines. Luckily uh, my very kind of amateurish fixture, um, uh, those two parallel bars worked out pretty well um, and my lines seem to be perpendicular to the frame ending in the exact same spot uh, on the bottom of the frame, which is a good sign. So now I'm moving the file over uh, to the top a couple of lines at a time. Decided to zoom out a little bit so that you can get more of a more of an overview of how it's going. Now uh, reflection, you can use the reflection or the way light bounces off the frame uh, to kind of see if uh, all the lines are equally uh, deep and uh, if, I'm, if I'm working on the entire circumference or radius of the uh, rear strap evenly. And the reason why you see the bottom look different is because that's where my file was skipping and because the surface is different uh, the reflection is different so it's not that it, it's wrong it's just uh, in this instance the reflection was, wasn't a good indicator. So we're just gonna see this process repeat over and over and over until I get to the very um, end of the straight uh, section of the rear strap and the reason why I didn't want to go too high is because at some point the um, the wall thickness between the rear strap and the mainspring hole uh, gets a little bit uh, tricky. Um, and I think at the very top where it's uh, where it's starting to kick out into a curve, into an undercut, um, it might be a little bit thinner. So I didn't want to go too high, basically. I decided to stop exactly where the um, original serrations used to be and not go any further. So process is, is the same. You see I'm moving the file over a few lines at a time. At this point I'm just trying to clean up and make sure that all the lines appear similar 
if not identical, um, in thickness, which which uh, tells me the depth um, is even between them. So, working on this, uh, the reason the reason why I, I go for horizontals first, I think I've mentioned this before in forums, especially. I'm not sure if I've done uh, that in videos. Is uh, because the file or I guess when you're working over a radius like this, a lot of the file is being used on small sections of, of material as you're passing uh, many, many teeth past one small section uh, of the frame. When you're doing verticals, it's the opposite. You actually work very little of the file over a large surface. So it's better to remove more material with horizontals first. As you can see, the horizontal lines laid down pretty well. Now I need to cut the vertical lines and I'm thinking I'm going to go across the entire uh, rear strap. So it'll take quite a bit of work, but in the end it should look pretty good with nice sharp 25 line per inch pyramids. Here's where you can see I used uh, zip ties as a, as a file stop uh, so that my file doesn't actually go and damage the uh, beaver tail undercut and uh, the initial vertical lines you've seen me put down um, at the beginning of the video where I was using the 1911 texturing jig or checkering jig um, <coughs> so I was able to find those uh, those lines with my file and continue deepening them uh, the process is again the same I deepen the original lines and then I start leaning the file over um, to the side either left or right to start making uh, new lines and then eventually you just reposition the file a few lines over and continue cutting while continuing to lean the file but on this frame it's actually not so bad because the radius is quite large on 1911 frames it can be a little more challenging um, the front straps are much more curved I guess um, so and plus this is aluminum so it's easier to cut um, in any case, you can see me uh, making more and more vertical lines. Um, the reason why I, I said I, I decided to go against across the entire um, rear strap is because at some point I was thinking about just focusing on the center area and leaving uh, sides untouched. Uh, then when I was filing horizontals, I thought, why not go uh, from side to side all the way, basically? And that's why that's why I decided to to cover the entire um, the entire radius of the uh, rear strap with checkering because there's no point not to um, this way it'll be completely textured from grip to grip basically and it uh, the 25 line per inch checkering uh, is is quite nice it doesn't hurt it doesn't uh, it doesn't bother the hand um, it's just it just feels nice also the most uh, scary area of this checkering was right in the middle where the uh, rear wall is the thinnest on the sides um, there's a lot of material so there's no reason to keep them untouched uh, that's what I thought so uh, it was my decision that's what I decided to do I know it's not very traditional looking so this is the first time you can see how it's coming out um, after I've uh, used the brush to clean out all the shavings or all the dust rather removed with the file and it's starting to to take on shape and it's starting to get a little bit sharp um, after this after these verticals um, you'll see that I'll go back and touch up on the horizontals and then if need be I'll touch up on the verticals but this this time around I didn't have to so uh, I've actually spent quite a bit of time on the verticals right away because after I removed those zip ties I didn't want to go back and put some new zip ties on and, and continue touching up verticals so instead I've decided to finish them completely 
to where I was satisfied with how sharp they were. Um, and after that, um, I'll just go and touch up horizontals again. Also take notice that uh, the zip ties are working out quite nicely and so far uh, there wasn't a single time when I uh, when my file actually sk skipped and moved them um, and cut into the um, area I didn't want to touch. You see how clean it is? Alright at this point I'm just gonna go over again uh, the horizontals and make sure that they're sharp and at that point I think we're gonna be pretty much done so this is why layout blue uh, is such a great product uh, because it really highlights all the areas that need to be touched um, for example where I cut deeper uh, if maybe my file was leaning a little bit uh, off to the side when I was cutting horizontals <clears throat> so just uh, this last pass uh, was a uh, I think was a was a pretty important pass and uh, it got it gave me the opportunity to clean up essentially uh, not only to make the uh, rows sharper but also to clean up and make them a, li a little more uniform at this point I just need to round uh, or chamfer this bottom edge this was a very quick thing I just uh, needed to get rid of those uh, remaining uh, pieces of serrations, original serrations. And now I'm going to go wash the frame, get rid of this blue, and show you what it looks like. Here's what we ended up with. Personally, I think it turned out pretty well. Um, I am just super happy that I never broke through into the mainspring hole uh, because that was pretty scary. Thank you for watching.